Hi there, it's been a crazy week this week. Already been down to London twice and I've been preparing loads of stuff for Spitfire for this mega release that's going on. I've also currently got two TV jobs on at the moment and one, which you'll find out soon, has extra dimensions of complexity. In absence of me walking up Arthur's seat and kind of ranting into a GH5, I've got to basically mix a track I did for the eDNA Earth Library. And I just thought I'd just run cameras whilst I did it. And it's, it's a fairly simple task. So I just wanted to share how I go about mixing. I'd say from a composer's point of view, I do have engineering chops. I used to run a recording studio and used to be the chief engineer there. I wasn't a very good engineer, but I kind of know my way around a, a board and all of that kind of stuff. I like to approach mixes with my composer hat still on, if you know what I mean. The way I think of it is I used to be a baker and I'll never forget the day where I got to make some jam donuts and I thought right fuck it I'm finally going to get to put the amount of jam that I want in a donut and guess what it was absolutely revolting it was just like I suddenly thought yeah what well, I don't have ever have an urge to like stick my hand in a jar of jam and just shove it in my mouth so I think the thing you have to realise with the jam donut is the kind of ingredients kind of ratios are important to the experience of a donut itself. Conversely, you want the dough to wrap around the jam, the jam not to wrap around the dough, etc, etc. So I see mixing like this. I've got a bunch of fantastic sounds, he says so himself, from eDNA Earth that I, you know, I love the sounds themselves, but they're massive bandwidth. And I just layered and layered and layered and layered. And for me, you know, I could give you an orange, a piece of sponge cake and a bar of chocolate. That would be a nice thing to eat together, but it would be far nicer to create a finely crafted Jaffa cake. And that's what I'm gonna do here today. So where mixing from a composer's point of view is concerned, I see it very much like balancing an orchestra, but instead we're balancing frequencies. And then at the end, I'll go in and do some mastering. If you want to see how I made this track, there's actually a tutorial on the Spitfire Master Channel, which is linked below. Right, okay, so let's set up ScreenFlow. I haven't put it on yet because it guzzles hard drive space like nobody's business. So we go five, four, this is how I sync, three, two, one. So that should now be in sync and you should be in there. Let's just run the track down so you can hear it in its just kind of post-composition state, but without any kind of uh, real mixing having been done on it. Okay, so here we go. So I, I really love the sound, but it is just quite a kind of thick custody, I wouldn't say mess, but it's just kind of very, very thick. And I think it's a combination of, of uh, carving out the different frequencies, but also so that different aspects have their moments. So it's just a little bit more shaped. You'll see that I haven't actually programmed any kind of orchestral expression, dynamics, that kind of stuff. I do want it to sound synthy, but I think just a little bit more shape would be nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna start with these harmonics. Uh, basically, we've got three standard orchestral patches, harmonics, flautando, and consort, all in the symphonics, I believe. I'm going to leave that for now because I feel that, that has a very kind of rich sound. I'm also using the flautandos here. Great. And the consordinos, which kind of feature a little bit later on. Now, for me, 
what I love about the flower tandos and the, the element that I really want to kind of draw out is I've basically got this channel EQ here just to boost the, the gain. But uh, what I really like about the flower tandos is the bottom end. So I'm going to really bring that out. I'm a fan of the Waves Renaissance. So I'm just going to take the very bottom off because I'm going to really start boosting that bottom end. And I don't want the speakers to be working hard on frequencies that we can't hear. So let's just go down. Just take it down to kind of around there and let's have a listen to this. Okay. Great, and then let's have a look at this consort. Get arrested by the sucking police. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna really filter off that bottom end there. So we're just letting the flower tandos, this is infuriating. Just have a listen to those together. Okay, what I'm then going to do is I'm actually going to send this out of its own bus. So if we go, instead of output that way, let's go to bus two. And I do have no shame, I use the, uh, the presets as a starting point. It's, it's 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 not the full kind of bandwidth, but there's some other stuff to go in there. So next up, the coin guitar. So there's some slightly unattractive frequencies in there. Don't want to take the character away from the guitar, but I just think. Now these weren't really cutting through enough for me, so I'm actually gonna eke out some of those slightly more harsh frequencies. I like that setting. We've got a similar sounding guitar that's tracked here. So all I'm gonna do is copy channel strip setting, paste channel strip setting. Let's have a listen to those two together.
Great, now on to the pads and stuff. Good, it's got a lovely bottom end, so again, I'm going to make use of that. Uh, but it's also got a kind of tone, which is not so attractive. And whilst just there's too much amplitude it, at that frequency, so it's taking up a lot of space with it. So let me just have a listen to this. I'm also just going to be a bit tarty with the top end as well. to this. Again, we've got so much bottom end in other stuff, I'm just going to chop that off. Uh, so let's go. I pass to just come on. Goretzky. Now, it's got a lovely fat bottom end, but we're just not going to hear it. Great. So I think what we're going to do is just again, chop that off, just find that shortcut. Um, Now, because these are providing a real kind of digital top end, I think that we should make these kind of work against each other. So I'm just going to pan that slightly there and that slightly there. So let's have a listen to those two together. See, that's interesting. It naturally gives each other their kind of moments. Let's have a listen to Anthem. It does feel a bit right heavy at the moment, though. See, I love the left and right of this. I think I might exacerbate that. I'm going to get the tremolo. These are my Vangelis fireworks. A bit of fun with the panning there. It's just a slight ugly high mid thing that I don't like as much. So just bring out the top. I am not a fan of 1K at all. Okay, saturated sequence. I think this is quite a toppy thing, if I recall correctly.
Great. And last but not least, the bass. Now, for me, I like the sound. Right in the middle, which is nice. For me, uh, what I think we need to do is get a bit of my old favourite on it. Uh, EXS24. Let's check we've got the right pitch. another bass, another auxiliary. bottom off that should probably be enough great last thing we're going to do is that just because the strings and all of that stuff are going to their own uh, thing I'm just going to put all of these pads into their own bus and just add a just a bit, bit more management on that so let's say they're going to bus four We'll do this blind just for fun so I don't have to play it down more than once but I'm just going to just working the opposite way to these so boost that up there when that's quieter okay and finally I'm going to just master the whole thing and then old favorite see for me this isn't necessarily about making the track louder it's about you know the track is this shaped and I just want to kind of make it like that so let's just do my standard mastering thing which is just chop take that down to somewhere around there always put a little bit of that on because I'm a tart and then uh, take fat and then like this, take the out ceiling because of that stuff that happens with MP3s. Um, and let's have a listen. Sounds a little bit more Jaffa cakey to me, so I'm going to bounce that down, send it off to the guys at Spitfire to stick on SoundCloud. And um, that's about it. Um, thanks as always for watching. If you like what I do, hit like. If you 
tell you what, I've had a bit of a bad day today. I gave up uh, about an hour and a bit of my time for a lovely person who I really like uh, to do an interview. Unfortunately, the sound at his end wasn't uh, very um, good. Um, so uh, we, as a precaution, recorded it onto my iPhone. Now, believe it or not, if you, t- <laughs> if you ignore all this stuff around me, I'm a bit of a Luddite. And I can't work iPhones at all, so I've had a real nightmare getting this sound file off my iPhone. I've also been really, really busy, and I didn't realise that the interview was kind of time-dependent. So, uh, unfortunately, what happened is, and I don't know why, a transcript of the interview was put up, but it was a transcript that had clearly been done by a computer. So it made me sound like... Donald Trump. I'm not joking. It was just like, it was like, I don't know. And I guess I'm not an articulate person. I don't have a cutting knife here. And I just thought if it was going to be printed, it would have been edited. And also all of those silly things that happen when, you know, you're talking technical language and it's a computer trying to interpret it and all of this kind of stuff. Anyway, I said, listen, is it possible we could take that down or we could, you know, and we'll, we'll get the audio as promised. I'm so sorry it's taken so long. And, um, so all sorts of nasty stuff has gone up on, not his, but someone involved with him, saying that there was some kind of, we were being mysterious and that I wanted to edit the audio myself and stuff. Couldn't be further from the truth. The character I portray is kind of me. I guess you don't get to see me kind of screaming at my children, as dads tend to do from time to time. But other than that, what you get is me really so to suddenly start and this is why i don't go to vi control anymore because they paint poor and eyes these horrible kind of horrific snake oil traders and it's just like i don't know we've been kind of hanging out and been on camera for about 10 years it's an awful long time to keep an act up anyway i'm sorry to the guy about the the, the this thing um I, I don't know what to say about your friend really but just no fair anyway <clears throat> thanks for sticking with me if you have and if you haven't subscribed yet uh, I'd be interested to know if you like things like this uh, that I've done today happy to do more of them because it means you know I, as part of my vlog I use my walking time to speak to you guys but if I can use my kind of working time my doing time to help out possibly inspire some different ideas very happy to help so put some comments down below uh, if you like what I do hit like that also helps let, letting me know what I should do more or less of and if you want to be notified then next time I put up a video just hit that little bell button see you next time